cult or no cult the blessing of the Lord makes me rich the blessing of the Lord makes you rich the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words my name is Andrew Hemstrock thank you for joining us if this is your first time here make sure you subscribe if this isn't your first time here and these messages are blessing you then consider becoming a partner with us well I would like to welcome you to the cult of prosperity and I say that somewhat tongue-in-cheek but we've been called a lot of things and in a way there's some truth to this because the definition of cult has changed over time and the modern definition is simply a non-standard belief something that's non-standard so if we don't believe that then you're believing something else and you're different and we're gonna call you a cult well the fact is we do believe something different for them their definition of cult tries to put it on us when we're not other than they're not believing what the word says yeah. are you here yeah. and so we believe things that other people don't they don't go there and so rather than going there say ah oh, they're a cult well in light of that I could also say welcome to the cult of divine healing or welcome to the cult of youth renewal and it's not that we're worshiping youth renewal or worshiping prosperity we're actually worshiping the God who does those things yeah. does that make sense yes. but they would ignorantly say oh that's the cult of prosperity when really we're just worshiping God in a way that they know not of and experiencing results from his word mm -hmm. and the worship of him that they can't go to That's right. all of these things according to them would be non-standard beliefs mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah. yes, it does. and I'm not going to do a deep dive into what constitutes an actual cult or cultism I'll leave that up to other people but instead I will attempt to stick to simple surface definitions mainly from the English dictionary you've heard of this right but from a Christian perspective and I said a few things about that already from a from a generalized religious standard Christian perspective anyone who holds to any other beliefs except for what they believe is non-standard so they're the ones defining what a cult would be mm -hmm. I can hear them saying it how many of you know we've been called a cult before yeah. well maybe after today I won't bother you so much so in other words anyone who believes anything other than what I do is a cult mm -hmm. that's their definition mm -hmm. well belief that God wants to prosper you is another thing that they don't believe and therefore you are in a cult of prosperity is this making sense mm -hmm. deemed a prosperity cult and I would have to say that with that definition I agree because I'm believing something non-standard to them yeah. are you here mm -hmm. is this fun yeah. <laughs> in a true definition of a cult there is always the element of a person being venerated and worshipped say a person, a person. Being, venerated being venerated and worshipped could you see how that might even apply to us mm -hmm. we venerate a person and worship a person his name is the Holy Ghost and he is a person that is not venerated or worshipped in the standard group in fact they barely recognize him straight out of the Merriam-Webster dictionary cult is a noun 
a religion regarded as unorthodox say a religion. a religion now who would it be regarded as unorthodox by those who think they're orthodox mm -hmm. so if you if you're believing something that i'm not believing that makes you a cult are you here mm -hmm. number two would be a great devotion to a person you're a cult if, if you have this great devotion or worship of a person say worship of a person. worship of a person a group of people characterized by such devotion to what a person mm -hmm. what person do you suppose that we venerate and worship here in this religious group of believers the Holy, the Holy Ghost so back off I worship the Holy Ghost say I worship, I worship. The, Holy the Holy Ghost and it's because we've come to know him as God and because you don't you say I'm a cult but they have it a little backwards cart before the horse kind of thing they would say we're in a cult of prosperity we don't worship prosperity we don't worship youth renewal we worship the living God we worship the Holy Ghost who is God in the earth today and we walk with him and then experience prosperity we experience youth renewal we experience healing and health mm -hmm. are you here yeah. we do worship a person but he happens to be the living god the one that jesus sent to be with us in the earth he's the only god in the earth today mm -hmm. and i worship him so deal with that and prosperity is the result that's where we're going today now i make no pretense my intent is to make holy ghost worshipers out of you that's non-standard according to most you know this some people may have never heard that before in their life and they'll be like "Ooh, some kind of weird cult my intent is to make holy ghost worshipers out of you and to introduce you into the prosperity that comes from worshiping him and if you want to call that a prosperity cult that's your problem i'm welcoming you into this holy ghost is god worshiping him and experiencing the prosperity that comes from him are we here is this okay so far yes. well some are not willing to go here as we know and therefore they end up staying where they're at and it's interesting that i become a cult simply because you choose not to go on it's interesting isn't it you're in a cult because i choose not to go on poo poo is that gonna stop me because you choose not to go on you're gonna call me a cult I think not well I do do things in a new way and I am NOT like you see you don't worship the Holy Ghost as God and I do and I've learned how to walk with him specifically by speaking in agreement with his word and even that is something that many people say is somehow wrong how can it be wrong saying what God has said Amen. I say what God has already said and you call me being in a cult or somehow I'm off you're off by not saying it mm -hmm. well I'm not like them the words I worship you Holy Ghost are simply not found among them and walking with him by saying words is most certainly non-standard Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9 if you will not believe surely you shall not be established now other translations say this if you do not believe you will not understand or you can say if you do not believe you will not see you won't see it mm -hmm. 
you won't experience it if you don't believe that god wants to prosper you don't worry about it you won't see it you won't be established in it and you won't experience it and you certainly won't understand it so don't worry about it why are you all up in my business over it the same is true that if you don't worship the holy ghost as god you won't understand you won't be established and you won't see unless you worship him you can't understand you're blocked from understanding and i see this all the time i'm regularly fielding answers to questions what about this what about that what about this what about that and the fact of the matter is they will never understand until they take that step of acknowledging the holy ghost is god and beginning to worship him mm -hmm. specifically using the words i worship you holy ghost but they ask about this they ask about that almost there but never quite get it there's always another question when you learn that the holy ghost is god in the earth today and you're supposed to worship the lord your god and him only serve say him only, him only. Serve. serve you've got something a lot of you heard that you've got something you see it you are established if you don't worship the holy ghost you don't know him as god it's as simple as that oh you just want me to believe and see prosperity in my life sounds evil doesn't it yes i want you to believe in those things and experience those things but even more so i want you to believe in the word and specifically the word spoken say believe, believe. in the word, the word. spoken, spoken frankly if you believe in the word spoken you can't help but believe in those other things that simply come to you every verse of scripture is a door to another world for you if it's a prosperity scripture what world do you enter into through that door of that scripture a world of prosperity every verse of scripture is a door to another world and you enter it and through it by saying and it's different for you over here you were one way you began speaking the word in agreement with the holy ghost and it became different for you when you entered in through that door that's in that word is this making sense yes. and prosperity is different from where you are right now second corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written i believed and therefore have i spoken we also believe and therefore speak we believe and speak we speak and believe according as it is written you must believe there is a door here i'm helping you out you must believe there is a door here in this verse of scripture that if i speak it and believe it i can enter through that door that's in that word into another world a world of prosperity you must believe there is power in speaking that word that will transport you there there where there where that word said mm -hmm. i go there according as it is written mm -hmm. i believe and speak isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth what does that mean goes forth out of your mouth oh you say it you speak it yeah so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth it shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish that which i please mm -hmm. and it the word that goes out of his mouth the spoken word 
it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it God's spoken word prospers say God's spoken word, God's spoken word. Prospers. prospers the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and we walk with him in the spoken word by saying his words and those words prosper mm -hmm. welcome to the so-called prosperity cult I'm walking with him in his prosperity words speaking in agreement with him and those words prosper seriously how can somebody have a problem with me for simply saying what God said I think they have a problem with it simply because number one they're not doing it mm -hmm. and number two they don't like it when it works for me mm -hmm. this works for me Luke 6 verse 38 here we have Jesus and he said give and it shall be given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that you meet with all it shall be measured to you again did Jesus say this yes. is this in your Bible yes. is this a word of God yes. if I say this am I saying thus says the Lord in fact when I say it it is more powerful and more pertinent than if I just had a revelation from God and began to say it saying thus saith the Lord as a prophet or something because I am saying what the Lord has already said the Holy Ghost gave it to Jesus to say and then Jesus said it now I am saying thus says the Lord when I speak a verse of Scripture I am saying thus says the Lord chapter and verse is de facto saying exactly that now according to Luke 6 38 do you want someone who believes this speaking over your tithes and offerings well that's exactly what I do I believe that when I say that so-and-so gives it is given unto them good measure pressed down shaken together and running over do men give into their bosom with the same measure they've met it's measured unto them mm -hmm. thus says the Lord this is the most effective way for the kingdom of God and especially for the Holy Ghost worshiper believing and speaking believing and speaking according to as it is written proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22 says the blessing of the lord it makes poor and you shall have tribulation with it you know if i said that in most Christian circles they would be yes amen but because I say chapter and verse and I speak it as thus says the Lord literally has Lord in this verse mm -hmm. the blessing of the Lord and who do we know that to be in the earth today Holy the Holy Ghost now the Lord is that spirit Amen. the blessing of the Lord the Holy Ghost it makes rich and you know what the translation of this word means it means rich <laughs> Hallelujah. as in not poor mm -hmm. the blessing of the Lord it makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it it makes you something in this room worshiping the Holy Ghost as God and speaking in agreement with his word this word the blessing of the Lord makes me rich adds no sorrow with it say the blessing, blessing. of the Lord, of the Lord. Makes, me makes me rich, rich. Adds, no with it. adds no sorrow with it the blessing of the Lord makes you something what does it make you rich. it makes you rich are you blessed or not 
you know you're blessed right galatians chapter 3 verse 14 says the blessing of abraham would come on the gentiles through faith the blessing comes on you say the blessing comes on me the blessing comes on me genesis 12 verse 2 i will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing genesis chapter 13 and verse 2 and abram was very rich say very rich, very rich in cattle in silver and in gold what does that mean if you're very rich in cattle silver and gold it means you got a lot of cattle mm -hmm. you got a lot of silver and you got a lot of gold i think he says that so we can't mess it up mm -hmm. And Abraham was spiritually rich so God blessed Abraham and the blessing was financial mm -hmm. Proverbs 10 22 says the blessing of the Lord it makes rich the blessing was financial if you know the blessing of the Lord then you know being made rich say if i know, if I know the, blessing the blessing of the lord, the lord then, I then i know being made rich, being made rich. get that straight cult or no cult the blessing of the lord makes me rich the blessing of the lord makes you rich the blessing of the lord is on me you begin to see this see you believe it then you begin to see it you believe it and you begin to understand it the blessing of the lord is on me and i know the blessing as being made rich i am blessed say it i am blessed begin looking through that door each word of god is a door you walk through and on the other side of that door is you in that verse of scripture <sighs> well welcome to the prosperity cult so called by people who don't believe this you believe it you walk through that door yeah. learn to say i am blessed yeah but you don't look blessed but i say i am blessed and i begin to understand it i begin to see it say i begin i begin you enter through that door by saying it and my saying is what i move into i'll say that again my saying is what i move into my saying is what i move into some of you got that the same spirit of faith we believe and also speak we speak and also believe deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 says thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he that gives thee power to get wealth what if i worship the lord my god and i start walking with him in his word mm -hmm. what does his word say it's him he mm -hmm. that gives me power to get wealth if i know the lord my god in deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 then i will know him as a god that gives me power to get wealth if i haven't entered into that verse of scripture by saying it i will never know this are you here mm -hmm. but you have to believe it before you see it and how do you believe it is by saying it we believe and also speak i have the ability to get to know and to walk in this power and bring other people into it it gets on them first timothy chapter 6 verse 17 charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches but trust in mm -hmm. believe in the living god who gives us richly all things to enjoy is this in your bible yes 
trust in the living god believe in the living god that's a belief it's cult like belief in the living god who gives us richly all things to enjoy mm -hmm. well i've got news for you i don't enjoy poverty he's going to give you richly something it, is it even possible for him to give you richly poverty no. that doesn't work i don't enjoy poverty and i refuse to take a vow of poverty and in my estimation a cult will be one who takes a vow of poverty and yet that is so embraced i do not take a vow of poverty worshiping and serving the living god what do i take a vow of what is a vow something you say living god gives me richly all things to enjoy i take a vow of first timothy chapter 6 verse 17. i take a vow of prosperity say it i take, I take a vow, a vow. Of prosperity. of prosperity why because i have his word in my mouth i believe it and i say it mm -hmm. i believe it and i say it say i believe it, I believe and, it. I say it. and i say it i take a vow of prosperity <laughs> living god gives me richly all things to enjoy and if you're in this room worshiping the holy ghost you will know him as the living god who gives you richly all things to enjoy holy ghost i worship you i thank you for being this wonderful living god and we thank you that we walk with you even this day in a newfound prosperity in a newfound way a way that pleases you where we can see and know and understand how far it is we can go and the blessing of the lord is on us and the blessing of the lord makes us rich says the lord and adds no sorrow with it i worship you holy ghost in jesus name amen, amen. if you have a tithe or an offering hold it in your hand say this after me i give, I give. and it's given, it's given unto me, me. good measure, measure. press down, down. shaken down. together down. and running down. over do men give into my bosom says the lord in jesus name the father amen the is in heaven jesus at his right hand holy ghost your god in the earth to